Welcome to the Chapel Jonesboro Online. I'm Pastor Lee, the executive pastor here, and I am so glad that you chose to join us in worship today. I know that God has something incredible in store for you and your family as you view this service today. So right now, Chapel Music is live in service. Let's jump on in there and get our worship on.
going to reap very much because you didn't sow very much. But this morning, if you give generously, that is, if you give with a heart that's full of gratitude this morning, you give your tithes, you give your offerings, you go above the call this morning, it means that you're going to reap generously as well. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we praise you, God. We thank you this place this morning, God, because we know what you're doing. We feel your presence already. Heavenly Father, we pray that you would bless those who are able to give, God. Lord, bless those who cannot this morning as well, Father. But Lord, we pray that you would just open up your spirit in this place, Lord. And as we open our hearts and receive you, God, speak to us this morning. Lord, we thank you. We praise you in the name of Jesus. Amen. How many of you feel dead this morning? How many of you have had a week that you just kind of feel like, blah? I'm just not feeling it today. Can I tell you that the only person that can make a difference in that is you? You have to make a choice to come out of your grave for the things that have been holding you down, whether it is sickness or fear or grief. You have to make the choice that I'm coming out of the grave. Amen. Come on, singing. Shame is a prison. It's cruel as a grave. Shame is a robber, and he's come to take my name. Love is my redeemer, lifting me up from the ground. Love is the power where my freedom song is found. There 
And that, God, your hand is not shortened that you can't reach to where we're at. And, Lord, I speak today, God, that there may be somebody that is here this morning or there may be somebody that is viewing right now. And you're going through the middle of hell. You're going through circumstances and you don't know what to do. You don't know what to say. You don't know which way to go. But, God, you're about to bring the answer to someone today. You're about to bring revelation to someone that is struggling this morning. To somebody that's in the in-between of the circumstances. Yes. And God, I speak today that any disturbance, any distraction, yes. any attitude, any situation, any circumstance, that it submit and surrender itself before you today. And that God, that your word go forth yes. today as a two-edged sword. Not to hurt not to break, but to awake. And God, I ask you today to take this word and use it in Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. Look around you. Greet someone. Tell them you're glad to see them here today. If you're viewing us online, just tell somebody in your house today. If you're just with your dog, just tell them, ain't it a good day that God has given us? Praise God. Do you feel what I feel? Look at someone beside you, and, and I know you get tired of doing this because my baby said, don't do it every Sunday. But look at somebody beside you and say, you sure do look good. If they don't, just tell them they do anyway. That's it. Because let me tell you, if you don't give yourself affirmation, ain't nobody going to give yourself affirmation. Praise God. You have your Bibles, your tablets, your cell phones, whatever it is you're going to use to go to the reading of the Word of God today. Turn to the book of Joshua, chapter 4, verse 6 through 11. This is something that I've only preached on a couple of times, but God has spoken to me this week. This is a word for today. Somebody say today. Do you need a word? When do you need the word? Today, praise God. Joshua chapter 4, verses 6 through 11. Joshua chapter 4, verses 6 through 11. Verse 6 of Joshua chapter 4. That this may be a sign among you when your children ask in time to come, saying, What do these stones mean to you? Then you shall answer them that the waters of the Jordan were cut off before the ark of the covenant of the Lord when it crossed over the Jordan. The waters of the Jordan were cut off off and these stones shall be for a memorial to the children of Israel forever and the children of Israel did so just as Joshua commanded and took up 12 stones from the midst of the Jordan as the Lord has spoken to Joshua according to the number of tribes of the children of Israel and carried them over with them to the place where they lodged and laid them down there then Joshua 
set up 12 stones in the midst of the Jordan in the place where the feet of the priest who bore the Ark of the Covenant stood. And they, they are to this day. And they are, they are there to this day. I need you to catch that. Say to this day. So the priest who bore the ark stood in the midst of the Jordan until everything was finished that the Lord had commanded Joshua to speak to the people according to all that Moses had commanded Joshua. And the people hurried and crossed over. Then it came to pass when all the people had completely crossed over that the ark of the Lord and the priest crossed over in the presence of the people. This morning... I want to say to you that just as these people were uncertain, there are things in our life that goes on that we're uncertain about. Can I get an amen? And here Joshua is, and he is uncertain as well. And to God, he is unproven. And it comes down to the Jordan River. And all he has to do is fight. All he has to fight with is what God promised him. Because God told him, God says, as I was with Moses, so shall I be with you. I want to tell somebody this morning that if God has promised you something, rest assured it will come to fruition. If God has made a promise to you, somebody this morning, you're saying, I haven't seen it yet, but I want to tell you, maybe it's the fact that you haven't gotten to the Jordan yet. Maybe it's the fact that you haven't gotten to the point of crossing over yet. Maybe it's the fact that you haven't fully listened and obeyed to God. So he comes down to the Jordan. This time, it's the Jordan. It's not the Red Sea. The conditions have changed. But it's still the same thing. The water is an obstacle. What is your obstacle today? The water was his obstacle. What are you facing today? And it comes down to the water with the promise of God. And he comes to the Jordan and nothing happens. This is the moment. This is the moment that proves the authenticity of leadership, of his leadership. This is the moment that he gets the public validation of a a majestical, mighty move of God that shuts every mouth as to the authenticity of the calling. And he comes down to this point. It comes down to the brink. And this particular time, the Jordan, the swelling, that is the tide, had risen and nothing happens. Have you ever gotten to a place in your life and you feel like, I'm there Everything's going good, but yet nothing happens. Nothing transpires. I'm speaking to someone this morning. And the priests are behind Joshua, and the people are behind him, and the promise of God is before him, and nothing happens. So I want to ask you, what do you do when it's your moment and nothing happens? My title today is When Nothing Works. When nothing works. Have you ever been in a situation where it seems like nothing is working? You try to be lovey-dovey and dovey don't want no lovey? (laughs) Hallelujah. You go above and beyond and nothing works. You do your best for your boss and you still don't get the raise. You're committed from nine to five and nothing works. I need a witness this morning. You've been everything you're supposed to be before God, but yet still nothing works. Nothing works. <laughs> oh, you have to fight him to get in the door. And you finally get in the door and nothing happens. What do you do when it's your moment and nothing happens? Come on, somebody needs to understand this this morning. It's your moment and it doesn't work. You see, this text is not about what worked. I think we've misunderstood what we've read because, you see, uh, we're a hype 
people. Anybody know what I'm talking about? We're people of hype. When things are going good, when you're up on the mountain, you can praise him. When everything is, when you bake, when the stimulus check hits you, oh, help me, Jesus. I say, let it be so in the house of God. But the check hits your account. The money comes. Check it. Oh, don't check it while you're in service. But the money hits your account. Everything is going good. Your dog ate his food and went outside and pooped like he was supposed to. It's going good. Your children are behaving like little angels with halos upon their head. There ain't no witnesses in this house for that one, is it? But here they are. The text is not about what worked. It's about what didn't work. If God was going to do with him what he did with Moses... He should have gotten to the edge of the Jordan, raised up a rod, and the waters went left and right, hither and thither. Can I say it that way? And, uh, but he walked up to the edge of the swelling of the Jordan, and nothing happened. Have you ever felt like God gave you a word for somebody? And you thought when you gave it to them, they were going to be shouting and screaming and rejoicing? And they looked at you like you were crazy. <laughs> I got witnesses here this morning. Makes me feel good. But can you imagine what the crowd was saying behind him? You can almost feel the beating of Joshua's heart. You can almost see the blood rushing to his face because he has told them that God was with him and there is still no move from heaven. Come on, guys. God is with me. He did it for Moses. He'll do it for me. Mm. <laughs> There's no wind. There's no blowing. There's no water parting. Everything is acting as though he has no anointing at all. And in this very moment, he must decide what some of you must decide right now. At this moment in your life that has come down to the critical point and nothing has happened, you have to decide, are you going to tuck your tail and turn your head and go back, or are you going to step down into the water? You're standing in front of a situation, and it's not changing. You're standing in front of the Jordan, and the water's still flowing. And you know God said he's going to do a miracle in your life. But are you willing to step out into the water that's flowing and receive the miracle? Or are you going to turn around and say, I'm going the other way because it's just not working the way that I thought it should work? God told me to tell somebody today, stop thinking it should work the way you think it should work, and let God work the way he's going to work yeah. Woo, I got two witnesses in this house this morning some of y'all need to be delivered today because you're stuck in the problem instead of pushing for the promise yeah. Woo. Yeah. the promise is the problem but the praise is not the posture hmm so God said, Joshua, he said, as I was with Moses, so shall I be with you, Joshua. But he didn't say that I'm going to do with you what I did with Moses. <laughs> he just said, I'm going to be with you as I was with Moses. You see, the church, <laughs> I'm going to go and say it because it's in my spirit and it got to come out. The church is wanting a Moses miracle, and we're missing the Joshua message. The church is stuck on what God did for Moses and delivered them. Oh, somebody here this morning. The church is stuck in yesterday because that's the way things should work. But let me tell y'all something this morning. Let me get this on out of my spirit this morning. You see, there's a lot of churches that are marching inside of their buildings. Oh, they have an old timey prayer march and everybody's running to the door because sister so-and-so or brother so-and-so they running all around the building. But let me tell you something. If you can't run outside of the building, 
you sure ain't going to run inside of the building. If you can't worship God in the rain, you sure ain't going to worship him in the sunshine. All you're doing is fooling people. Oh, help me, Jesus. You're fooling them to your fantasy. You can travel the world, but you can't get in your community. You want the world to come to your community, but you sure don't want them to see your community. I'm sick of it. Taking God's word. Taking God's money. I don't play games when it comes to God. Because let me tell you something. I'm willing to step down in a muddy creek and get my toes dirty to get the miracle that God has for me. Ha. And you. How far are you willing to go? <laughs> Whoever I'm preaching to today. Oh, I done got excited now. You're getting ready to walk into something that ain't moving. You're getting ready to walk into something that's standing in the face and laughing at your faith and telling you that your God don't work and you're in it by yourself. It's telling you that if God was with you, your husband or your wife wouldn't have left you. It's telling you that if God was with you when all hell broke loose in your life, if God was with you, you wouldn't have had to go for the test in the middle of the storm. And if God was with you, you wouldn't have had to fight off the enemy. But I want to tell somebody this morning, the devil is a liar. Do you hear what I'm telling you? I said the devil is a liar. I say it again. The devil is a liar. If you believe he's a liar this morning, I dare you to give him out 30 seconds of praise in this house and call him a two-faced split tongue oh cross-eyed oh you you hear liar he's a liar let me set the stage let me get back to this sermon because I'm preaching some of this out of my heart some of this out of my spirit and some of this out of my flesh and I got to get back to it yeah that's another thing pastors ain't gonna be honest with you from the pulpit huh but let me set the stage this morning. Joshua was in the water. Somebody say in the water. His feet are wet. If God was with him, really, if God was with him, oh, I'm not going to stop seeing it. The devil don't want it to go forth this morning, but he's a liar. And I'm going to preach what God has given me this morning. I'm going to preach it anyway because it, this is going to unlock something for somebody today. This is going to break a yoke for somebody today. This is going to open up a door today that has been slammed in somebody's face today. This is going to release somebody today. This is going to set somebody free today. You see, the devil, I'm going to say it again, you're in the middle of transition. You're in the middle of change. You're in the middle of obstacles. And you thought God was going to work one way. And it didn't work like you thought it was going to work. And you think that, to, that the fact that it didn't work the way you thought it was going to work. That God said no. He said Joshua. I'm going to be with you as I was with Moses. He's not left you. You might have left him. Because the devil's a liar. Just because the waters didn't or don't part at the bank doesn't mean it won't open in the middle. I don't think you caught what I told you. He stepped out into the water. He's there out in the water. <laughs> and already the type is shattered already because Moses, oh, do you hear what I'm telling you? Moses, the people brag because their feet never got wet. And can you imagine people coming down into the water and saying, now you know this isn't right, Joshua. There's something wrong with this, Joshua, because uh, my mama said that when they stepped down into the water, their feet didn't get wet. And now this man has got us walking in water that ain't moving, glory to God. He got us doing something that my mama didn't have to do. And it looks like God is not with us, Joshua. And he kept on walking. 
the murmuring and the complaining, he kept on walking. <laughs> Some of y'all this morning have stopped in the murmuring. The controversy, and he kept on walking. You see, our country is in a controversy right now. Our world is in a controversy right now. Some people are trying to figure out what to do. But I want to tell somebody today, you got to keep walking. Oh, somebody say, they say, let it out. Then, then they say, whatever you, uh, say what you want to say. Be what you want to do. do wh uh, be whatever you want. They can feel however they want to feel, but you got to keep walking. That's for somebody this morning. You see, uh, we're wrong because we're not doing it the way they want us to do it. <laughs> oh, they're going to call. Oh, help me, Jesus. I, I got away from that. I may get back to that. But let me tell somebody, when you know God is on your side, you got to keep walking. I don't know who I'm encouraging this morning, but no matter what your position is, no matter what your, oh, somebody here this morning, no matter what your position is, you got an opposition. I'm going to say it again. No matter what your position is, you got an opposition. <laughs> and if you feel like your position is really God, you got to keep walking. <laughs> oh, do you hear the man over there sitting on the side? I don't think y'all getting what I'm telling you this morning. This man just had hip surgery. <laughs> oh, not even a week yet. And where is he at today? He ain't laying up in his house saying, Poor pitiful me. He ain't laying, he, he's in the house of God today because he knows that God has done something in his life. You see, some of y'all let the obstacle, the opposition get in your way, and it defers you from the position that God has called you into. They kept on walking, they stepped out into the water, and nothing moved. And the priest went with him you see you got to have somebody who will get in trouble with you <laughs> you see because if you don't have somebody with you that'll get in trouble with you you're by yourself you got to have somebody who's committed to you that will step down into the waters that ain't moving. And they'll say, if you go, then I'm going. If you perish, then I'm going to perish. Because I'm going to see the king. You see, we might have to drown out there. But bless God, I'm going to see the king. We might get swallowed up with everything going on around me. But I'm going to see the king. We might get embarrassed and humiliated. But I'm going to see the king. I left too much behind me to mess with people around around me that are not going to where I'm going to. You see, there are people that want to pull you down. That, oh, come on. Help me, Lord. There are people that want you to do it their way, and if you don't do it their way, you're wrong. If you don't believe in their cause, you're wrong. If you owe somebody, I'm sick and tired of people telling me, you don't know how I feel. You don't know what I'm going through. Let me tell you something. You don't know what Jesus went through to save your pitiful soul. You don't know it. All you know is how you feel. Get out of your feelings and get on your face before God and ask him to heal you of your pitifulness. I left too much behind to let you throw your junk on my life. Somebody need to say it. I've come too far to look back. Oh, that's an old art. Oh, I almost seen that this morning. You got to say, I've made up my mind. If I perish, I perish. But I'm going into this water. Oh, <laughs> my feet might get wet. But I'm going to step into this water. My ankles might get wet. But I'm going to step into this water. My knees might get wet, but I'm going to step into this water. Let me tell you, I guess it was 10 or 12 years ago. I had a family come to me and want to be baptized. But they didn't want to be baptized in the church baptism. They wanted to be baptized in the Star's Mill. Creek, river, whatever you call it. Falls, I don't know what they call it. They wanted to be baptized there. I said, I'll do it. 
And I pulled up down there and I seen that nasty water and fish floating dead. I said, Lord Jesus, I got to get out in here. But let me tell you, they wouldn't come into that water until I got into that water. How far are you willing to step? Just because it looks murky and muddy and nasty, are you willing to step in the murk and the mud to get your promise? <laughs> are you willing to, oh, you better hear what I'm about to tell you. Are you willing to step over somebody that's keeping you from your promise? Uh, I'm going to go a little deeper because you really going to lie. Are you willing to step on somebody to get your promise? <laughs> oh, my knees might get wet, but I'm stepping into this water. Oh, Lord, though he slay me, yet shall I trust him. I'm going in the water. Oh, the Holy Ghost is in this house this morning. I'm going to tell you somebody this morning. God's saying step in it anyway. Oh, I, I, they don't like you, but step in it anyway. I know they're talking. There's some people talking about me this morning. I really don't care. Keep your talk to yourself because it belongs to you and not me. Somebody need to hear it. They're talking about you, but step into it anyway. I, I know they're against some of you, but step in it anyway. I know somebody has been texting about you, but step in it anyway. They're talking. Oh, this is really going to hit. They're talking about you on Facebook and Instagram, but step in it anyway. Slap in the middle of the water. Don't worry about what they're saying about you. Keep on walking. Step on the next stone and leave. Leave them behind. Let me tell you something. Commitment is showed by your actions. A committed person does not attack. They come alongside. Do I need to say it again? Because I'm sick and tired of what's going on. Let me make this clear this morning. What the police officers did with these individuals that they took their lives was wrong. But it does not make all police officers bad. It does not justify burning down buildings in Atlanta. It, listen to me. Somebody need to hear this this morning. Where are all the protests at today? Where are all the rallies at today? Where's all the stuff going on that was going on six weeks ago? They had to go back to work because the unemployment got cut off. And they had, somebody better hear me. I'm sick of what's going on. We need to step up and do what God has called us to do in any of this stuff, in any of these things that are going on. Where's the person that got out there and said, God is good? None of it was about God. If it's not about God, it's about you. I'm sick of it. You think an election's going to change this mess? A decision for Jesus is the only thing that's going to change this mess. I have decided to follow Jesus. I don't know what you decide. I'm going to preach. I got to get through this. You see, all of a sudden, Joshua and his priest stepped down into the water. And when they got in the middle of it, when they got in the middle, when they stepped into the middle of the mess, God showed up. God told me to tell somebody this morning, he's not going to do anything if you don't do nothing. He's not going to do nothing if you don't do nothing. He's not going to move if you don't move. He's not going to show up if you don't show up. But if you show up, the Lord said, I will meet you halfway. God said, I will meet you halfway. He said, I'm through making it easy. I made it easy for Moses, Joshua. He said, but you have to be willing to get your feet wet. You got to be willing to step out in the water and I'll meet you halfway. So Joshua stepped into the water because this was the moment. And when it's your moment, you can't go back. When it's your moment, you can't give up. When it's your moment, you can't give in. I came to tell somebody today, this is your moment. This is your moment when nothing works. 
this is your moment. When nothing works, this is the kind of moment that changes the world. This is the kind of moment that changes your trajectory of where you're going. This is our moment. This is our time. This is when it's time to step down in the water, to step, oh, somebody this morning, to step into the what's going on, to step into the messiness, to get mud in between your toes, to, to kick uh, uh, your cute shoes off. Somebody need to hear this this morning. To get down in the mud and the mess of it and say, as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. I don't know who I'm talking to this morning, but I feel like talking to somebody. Hallelujah. Tell somebody today, step on in it. Step on in it. Step into the messiness of it. Your marriage is in trouble. It ain't going to never get better as long as you're standing on the banks. You got to step in the mess. You got to step down and get your feet dirty. You got to get some mud in between your toes. You got to mess up that hairdo that you just got. You got to tell the devil, you can't have my marriage. You can't have my son. You can't have my daughter. You can't have my mind. You can't have my church. You can't have my job. You can't have my future. You may have my past, but you don't have my future. You can't have what's going on in my life because I have decided to step into the water. I'm not staying where I'm at no more. I've been comfortable on the bank too long. Let me tell you something. At the ocean, you can fish on the bank or the, 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 the beach all you want to, but until you're willing to get out there in the middle of the fish and throw a rod out, you're not going to catch nothing. In other words, some fish may bite you while you're in the middle of catching. Let me tell you, somebody's going to bite you by the end of the day. They're going to say something bad about you by the end of the day. If they already have about me, I say bless God, get yourself delivered because I'm delivered what God has called me to give today. That's what you need to tell the people that are around you. That's not my business. I'm stepping in the mess of this thing. Oh, when the Spirit comes in like a flood. Somebody need to hear me today. The Spirit of, Lord, of the Lord will lift up a standard against the enemy. That's why the priest had to go first. You see, because the priests represent the praise. And when the priest, oh, I don't think you got me. The priest represent the praise. So when the praises go up, the blessings come down. Do I need to say it again? Because I got some folks in here, you sitting like you defeated. When the praise goes up, then the blessings come down. When the praise goes up, then the trouble goes away. When the praise has come up, then the depression goes away. When the praise goes up, then the anxiety goes away. When the praises go up, then poverty has to flee. When the praises go up, then sickness has to flee. When the praises go up, then the distractions and disturbances around you has to get out of the way. Somebody here this morning, you need to praise him in the middle of your problem. If you're at home today, you need to praise him at home. If you're sitting and watching me today and you're eating a sandwich or drinking coffee, push it to the side and praise God. If you're walking in your house today and you got on pajamas or you got on your drawers, you need to praise God anyway. You can't praise him naked. How are you going to praise him with clothes on? You ought to hear me in the shower. I didn't say see me in the shower. Get your mind out of the mud. If you can't praise him naked, you sure ain't going to praise him but clothes on. What are you saying, Pete? I'm saying if you can't praise him in the middle of your problem, you sure can't praise him in the middle of your promise. Woo. Oh. Somebody at home need to put that fork down a minute. Spit that food out on a plate. And let something out of your mouth that ain't garbage. Oh. Oh, put the coffee cup down or raise it in there. I don't care what you do. But let me tell you something. When I think of his goodness and what he's done for me, do I need to say it again? When I think of his goodness and what he's done for me, it makes me want to shout, shout, shout. i say it again. When I think about his goodness and what he's done for me, it makes me want to dance, hallelujah, dance a little bit. When I think of his goodness, it makes me want to run. When I think of his goodness, it makes me want to jump. When I think of his goodness, it makes me want to twirl. When I think of his goodness, it makes me want to let loose. Woo! Open up your mouth and give God something this morning.
That's the warming up praise right there. That may be what's wrong with some of you. Your blood ain't flowing. Stand up just a minute and praise him. Your legs are tired, praise him. Your mind is tired, praise him. You are tired, praise him. Oh, somebody, your spiritual being is tired, praise him this morning. Woo! He said, if you don't praise me, the rocks will cry out. Ain't no rock going to praise my God. Woo! Woo! Hallelujah. Yes. Come on one more time. Yes. Hallelujah. Woo! Oh. Oh, I can't hear you. You got to open up your mouth and give God something this morning. The priests were standing still. And the children of Israel were coming through the priest. And they were coming through fast. And they, you see, because the Jordan was significant of going into the promise. It is significant of us leaving here and going to heaven. <laughs> and the Bible said that where the feet of the priest stood firm, God said, wherever you stand firm, wherever you take a stand, wherever you stop being wishy-washy, wherever you stop being two-faced, whenever your feet stand firm, <laughs> You see, the one that lashes out at you, walk, look at their walk. The one that says something about you, oh, come on. Pray for them. <laughs> you see, because we got some of them people. They can shout Jesus down on Sunday. They can cuss you out on Monday. Oh, come on. <laughs> oh, this is a painful message this morning. You see, because that's why nothing's working in their life. Because they're two-faced. Oh, I'm just going to say it. Their tongue is split on both sides. <laughs> she said don't say it. Lick, lick, lick. That's for my guys in the back. You see, God said, I want you to take a stone, Joshua, from the place where the feet of the priest stood firm. I need you to catch that this morning. It means you got to stand when it looks like nothing is working. You got to stand when it looks like God didn't hear you. You got to stand when everybody else is ostracizing you. You got to stand when life looks complicated. And the Bible said that the priest stood there. They stood till the wind came. They stood till the waters parted. They stood till a way was made. They stood till the children of Israel started coming through. They stood. Do you hear? The priests. What did I say the priests represented a minute ago? They started praising until the winds came. They started, oh, you don't hear what I'm telling you this morning. They started praising till the water began to separate it. They started praising when the people started coming across. They started praising where they was, when there was no way. They started praising and kept continued to praise until they saw the way beginning to happen. They started praising when they saw the children of Israel coming through. Somebody need to say, look at somebody and say, just stand. You see, you don't know what it is to do, just stand. Just to stand flat-footed. You see, this rock is Jesus. <laughs> what did he say? <laughs> what did he say about building this house on the rock? Oh, come on, some of you guys, you done built your house on sand and you thinking the rock. Oh, I'm not talking about Dwayne Johnson this morning. You built your house on something that is not God, and you asking it to stand up. Oh, you better help. somebody better help me preach this one. Keep it inside, PD. Woo! You see, <laughs> you got to stand, stand on the fact that God is not a man that He should lie, or the Son of Man that He should repent. You see, what I'm trying to tell somebody is what God spoke to you was not a lie. What he promised you was not a lie. What he has put in front of you, the blessing, the, the life, but the Jeremiah 29 and 11 that he's called you out for was not a lie. 
What you've told yourself is the lie. Because you told yourself something that you were not standing on. You slipped off the rock. <laughs> oh, somebody feels what I feel this morning. <laughs> somebody say stand. 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 Point at somebody and say stand. stand. I didn't tell you look at your neighbor. I said point at them. Point at them because we're good at doing that. We're real good at doing that. <laughs> and so right where they stood, God said, I don't want a rock that you're not standing on. He said, I don't want a rock that you're not standing on. He said, I can't use a rock that you didn't stand on. You see, it's not the rock by itself. It's the combination. <laughs> oh, help me, Jesus. It's the combination. Oh, say it again. Say it. Somebody say it because if you hear what I'm telling you. It's the combination, oh, I praise God, of the rock and the feet, the truth and the conviction that are going. Every place where the priest's feet stood firm, uh, he said, take a rock where they have stepped to. So when all of the children of Israel had passed over to the other side, God said, take a rock where the feet of the priest stood firm because I'm going to turn your moment or your monument, oh, hallelujah, your moment into a memorial I'm going to turn your situation into something that you'll never forget I'm going to turn your life around if you will take what you've been standing on and place it to where I'm sending you to you see a, a memorial is something that you remember you see I want to ask you this morning will you remember your rock as praise or will you remember your rock as a tombstone Oh, this is serious, ain't it? This got real serious. You see, a memorial is something you remember. A memor memorial is something you teach your children. A memorial is a standard. Get away from here, Blink. I ain't got time for you. That sets you apart from other people. A memorial is your story. Your history. Your destiny. Your legacy. And it's all tied up to a bunch of rocks. Somebody say it's about the stones. <laughs> it's about the stones. And, 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 and look at somebody say, don't leave till you get your stone. Don't leave till you get your stone because, you see, you had to step on it to get to where you were going. You had to stand on it to get to where you were going. And God said, he told Joshua, he said, tell the people that everywhere that the priest stood in the middle of the Jordan to pick those stones up and take them with them because they're going to remind them of what I did this day. I did it in an unorthodox way. I did it in a way that, that, that I didn't do for Moses. I did it in a way to show them that miracles don't always come the same way that oh come on somebody this morning you got your miracle formulated as to how you want it but God said no all I asked you to do was stand on the stone that I placed under your feet and then I would do the rest of it for you God said to tell somebody this morning stop trying to do his job stop oh somebody need to hear that today stop judging people least you be oh help me Jesus Check your own mailbox. And if you ain't got the stone of Jesus Christ in it, then you need to go get it. The Bible said that the priests were forbidden to leave the Jordan without the stone. Too many times we leave our Jordan without getting our stones. Too many times we're just glad to get by. And we don't get nothing out of it. I'm, I, I decided years back, I'm tired of getting by. I dropped that word. Y'all haven't heard me say, I dropped that word of I'm a survivor. Because let me tell you, if you live under a survivor mentality, you can't live under a victory mentality. If you live as a survivor, you can't live as victorious. You're stuck in the survivor mode when God says, I'm an overcomer. Oh, somebody this morning. When God says, greater, oh, somebody today. God said, greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. You see, the he that is in you is not a survivor. He's a deliverer. He's a provider. He's an anointer. He's a chain breaker. Do you hear me this morning? He, somebody today, he's a promise keeper. Woo. You see... 
we leave the Jordan without taking our stones. God said, I didn't take you through all of this for you not to get something out of it. He said, get something out of it before you leave. Now, I can imagine as the waters are standing ahead <laughs> and the people are running out of time, I'm getting ready to close. And the priest who already got a load got to reach down and get a stone. Do you hear one? The priest had on garments, heavy garments. And somebody need to hear me this one. They're carrying a lot of weight. You see, the priest carries a lot of weight. But God said, I know what you're carrying, but you're not carrying so much that you can't pick up one of these stones and carry it at the same time. You see, the, song, the stones are so important to God that he added more weight. This is the way to glory. Does somebody hear what I'm telling you? Glory costs something. God is heavy on your shoulders. Oh, y'all, oh, somebody this morning, you ought to be blessing God. You're carrying a load today, and you can't figure out why you're carrying it. But God said, on top of your load is glory in your life. On top of your situation is glory in your life on top of your problem is the glory of God. He said, oh, somebody here, that, well, you know, God won't put on me only, that only so much that I can bear. No, God said, I want to put some glory on top of what you're bearing because I want to help you get through this thing. When you begin to see the glory and not the burden, then you begin to see the blessing that God has for your life. I dare somebody today to praise him because God's glory is on your life. Somebody today, give him praise in this place. Woo. I need you to catch this. How many of you have ever been in a swimming pool or water, underwater? Things are weightless underwater. An average man can pick up a thousand pounds underwater because it's weightless. You see, I don't think you caught what I was telling you. He said, I want you to pick up that boulder. I want you to pick up that stone and see just like somebody, well, God, that's too heavy. You know, I can't carry all of that. Oh, that's some, some of y'all's excuses in your own life. That's too much, God. I can't carry that in my life. And God said, until you carry that, you won't be able to carry what I got for you. <laughs> oh, somebody. Did. So, you see, the, the, the stones were weightless as they began to lift them up. But as Oh, somebody, you see, your problem is weightless. Water is significant of the Holy Spirit. When you're, <laughs> when you're covered by the Holy Ghost, the, your problem is weightless. Somebody need to hear this this morning. But you see, when they pull the rocks up out of the river, as the rock began to come up out of the top of the water, then it regained its weight. What was once light now had to be carried on the shoulder of the priest. Are you with me? As I stand up here today and I preach, I was so, <laughs> let me tell you, my oldest son was here Wednesday night and he brought the word. He brought the word. I have another son that's a lot younger. He's the baby and he is anointed to preach as well. If you're watching this morning, Logan, you need to pick it on up, son, because God's called you. He knows it. But I have a son. I got three back there. One that I actually helped. Do the process in. <laughs> Take your mask off, son. I give you permission. But as my son sits back there today, he's always by my side. But I want him to see the stones that I carried. I want him to know that his dad is a fighter. I want him to know that I'm willing to step into a building of people that are angry and mad and give the word of God. I'm willing to step into the streets. As we came in this morning, the Lord spoke to me. We we're right here in Iron Gate. We've hit that community before, but we didn't hit the part that we were supposed to. God said, I want you to go back, and I want you to hit the crack house that you pass every time. He said, stop dodging the crack and the drugs and the people. He said, look around. They're all in their yards this morning. At 845, they're walking around in the the streets why aren't we there it's because we're worried about what might happen to our stone instead of what might happen to their souls I want you to understand Lee the crowd don't define you somebody need to catch that this morning the crowd doesn't define you <laughs> when you're willing to step into a place and fight right by yourself you begin to understand that. Because what does the word say? The word says if God be for you, then he is more than the world that is against you. And when all hell is breaking loose, uh, you just stand. 
Somebody holler, Stan. I'm getting ready to close. Come on, help me preach this thing. This is something you, you can't get it out of a book. It, it's something that has to be modeled in front of you. You got to see it in your life. You got to be uh, able to point at, at, at it. You got to have a, a, enough sense to recognize it. And there ain't nothing but stones. There ain't even books. They're reaching, they're teaching a class, but they're teaching it with stones. God said, Joshua, take these stones, pile them up where you live. So that when your children, when your children pass by, tell them what these stones mean. Tell them. Somebody say it's all about the stones. It's all about the stones. It's not about jewelry. It's not about the gold. It's not about a bank account. It's not about silver. It's not about money. It's not about a house. It's not about a car. It's not about a relationship with somebody. It's about the stones. And if you got the stones, guess what? You can build a house. If you got the stones, you can get to the gold. If you've got the stones, you can get the silver. It's all about, oh, hallelujah, I feel the Holy Ghost speaking in tongues this morning. Somebody here, if you got the stones, then you got all that God wants you to have it's the stones that you got mm. somebody say it it's the stones it's a fight you got it's stand up you got it's a force that you got it's a tenacity that you got it's a fight that you got it's a tribe that you got it's a relentlessness that you've got and you got to stand there because let me tell you, they're going to keep slapping on you. It's going to get worse. They're going to keep beating on the church. But let me tell you something. They don't know what the church is built out of. <laughs> they don't know what the church is built out of. This message that God gave me today. <laughs> this message. <laughs> to this generation of today. Is a message that was about the stones of past history. If we begin to understand what Jesus died for, what Jesus stands for, what our lives truly meant that he laid down, God gave his only begotten son. So whosoever will, oh, somebody this morning, because there's some whosoever's out there today that don't know the Lord. But this is what the Lord has spoken to me. Live feed, you're going to notice the service doesn't quit right now. Because God says, I told you to walk across the Jordan. I sent the praise before you. I cleared away. You see, there's some footmen out there that have stopped cutting the way. You're holding up the horsemen. You're holding up what God is going to do. So this morning, bring me my stones. What does your stone represent? What does your stone represent? Give me one, son. What does your stone represent? Can you get me on this one over here? What does your stone represent? What do you see as your stone? What do you see? What do you see? Do you see praise? Or do you see the message of the epitaph, the tombstone? that 90% of the time says something about you that you were not. Mm. Mm. Somebody need to hear this this morning. What's the stone in your life represent? Are you still carrying it? Are you still carrying it? Because when you leave here today, you're going to get one of these stones. I'm going to give this altar open and you're going to get one of these stones. And what you do with it is your decision. But the symbolism is symbolic.
of that that Joshua did. Because Joshua got to the bank. And he stood there, and the murmurers behind him said, Oh, Joshua, we ain't coming until we see the waters move. We're not moving, Joshua, until we see God do what he did for Moses. We're staying back here. <laughs> and God told Joshua, he said, uh, Stop listening to what they're saying. Stop letting what they're saying to you get down in your spirit and mess your stone up. He said, I need you to step on in to the water. I need you to step a little bit, Joshua. I need you to put, oh, somebody this morning, 12 stones in the Jordan River. 12 stones represented the 12, 12 tribes. 12 stones down into that one. He said, I, I made a way where there is no way. Oh, somebody need to catch me this morning. He said, but I need you not to put your stone over there, your foot over there on the mud. I need you to step in the right spot. Mm. Uh. You see, sometimes our steps get crossed up. We trip ourselves. <laughs> he said, when the last person comes across, Joshua... <laughs> oh, I, I, if you remember what I said, I said that the priest stood there. There was a pretty good sized stone. I don't think he caught that. And as the priest stood on the stone, and they, they were still praising, they were still worshiping God, he said that the people began to walk by. They stepped on the stone that the priest was standing Oh, I think you got me this morning. Standing on, and they walked right through the praise on top of the stone. The priest represented that, that they were walking through the praise. And he said, when the last person crosses, Joshua, tell the priest to pull the stone up. Because I got something else for them. He said, I need them to praise me beyond the Jordan. I need them to praise me beyond the obstacle. I need them to praise me beyond the circumstance. I need them to praise me beyond the sickness, beyond the problem, beyond the heartache, beyond everything that's going on. I need them to praise me. Let me tell you something. When we decide to get out of this building and to get in the streets and begin to praise God and stop telling people that they're going to hell. Stop critiquing and criticizing people and begin to show them what we live by. So what does your stone represent this morning? You that are viewing me today, if you'll enter in the comments your address or a way that we can get this to you, Enter it in there and we will respond. You get something heavy in the mail. <laughs> you just got stoned. <sighs> what does it represent? What does it represent in your life? Come on, baby, come with me. What does it represent in your life? What's it look like in your life? What's your stone been saying lately? Oh, God, it ain't going to happen. Oh, God, you know, this, this is some nasty stuff I got to walk through, God. Oh, God, you know, uh, uh, you did it this way before, but, God, I need you to do it. Because, you know, God, I don't want to get messed up to get my miracle. I, I, I don't want to, oh, come on. I don't want to get my nails dirty, God. You know, I just spent $65 on them nails. Let me tell you something, honey. If you can spend $60 on your nails, you surely can tithe in the house of God. <laughs> Pastor Bruce, I love, I love what you said this morning, but let me tell you all something. It, uh, there's no excuse that you cannot give to God. Bless those that have and bless those that have not. How are you living if you don't have money? Help me, Jesus. Oh, in a wreck, get a check, call Ken. I'm helping somebody this morning. You waiting on Ken to give you what he can. But somebody need to call on God and give he'll give you what he wants. <laughs> If you lost your praise this morning, thank you, that's good. I'm wearing her out. 
You lost your praises because you misplaced your stone. You uh, said, you know what? I'm good. I don't need that thing. I, I just, I dropped it off. I don't need it anymore. My life is good, God. I got a good husband. I got a good wife. My children are acting like little angels. That's when you have laid your stone down because you've given yourself a, a, a sense of false belief. <laughs> You see, the devil would like nothing more but then to take your stone this morning. <laughs> you see, he, he, trust me, some of y'all saying, no, nah, no, nah. if he ain't bothering you, he's already got you. Oh, boy, it really got real today in this house, didn't it? If you think you're peaceful and everything is good, you need to ask yourself this question. Am I peaceful because I have my stone, I'm praising him? Or am I peaceful because I have decided to settle right where I'm at? Mm. Mm. Where are you at this morning? At home. Where are you at this morning? What are you going through? We, we have a huge online presence here at the chapel. Some of you don't. There's as many online right now as there is in this building. And, and their giving is just the same. Never stepped in this door, but we got people that will bless this ministry because their life has been blessed. Because let me tell you, they're handling their stone just right. I <laughs> uh, see you, uh, you, you want to be blessed, you got to ask yourself, oh, where's my stone at? Uh, am I praising him in the morning? Am I praising him in the noontime? Am I praising him in the evening time? Or am I just praising him when things are going good? Stand to your feet this morning. I want to reiterate something that the Lord has spoke to me. They're viewing today and they want to receive this stone. Enter into the comments your address because your name will automatically come up. We will make that happen. But if they're not here this morning, somebody need to hear what I'm saying. You see, you can't get a blessing without hearing, oh, somebody need to catch me this morning. Don't come and ask me to give you one to take to your husband or your wife or your children. Because this stone is for somebody right here today that's trying to cross over what they're going through. I don't think you caught what I'm telling you because you're saying, well, that's not real good, Pastor. But let me tell you all this. When they begin to cross over 12 tri tribes, did you catch that? The leaders took the people that were with them behind them. So it's your responsibility today to take the praise that leaves out of here with you to the ones that are you want to go with you. Are you with me now? You got what I'm saying now. <laughs> because, oh God, when I get to church today, I want the pastor to give me an anointed prayer cloth. Because I'm going to take it over here and I'm going to I'm going to place it on them. You can place it on them till they're blue in the face. But until they decide to get this right, oh my Lord, oh my Lord, oh my Lord. They're covering up their stone. Why do you think ladies wear makeup? First off is to enhance their beauty. I'm not against makeup. I got a beautiful wife up there. You do it good, baby. But I've seen you without it, and you look good, too. I've seen both sides. 
Because without it, oh, somebody need to hear me this morning. Oh, there's men that wear it now. Hello. But let me tell you why we got everything that's going on in society right now. Because somebody has taken their stone and they have thrown it at somebody else. What does it say? He who is without sin, let him cast the first stone. But I want to tell somebody today, if they've been throwing stones at you, let me tell you how, what you got to do. You got to walk on what they're throwing at you. Do you hear what I'm telling you? You got to step on top of what they're throwing at you and say, you know what? Sticks and stones may break my bones, but names will never hurt me. When you learn to walk on that that God has put in front of you, then you will step into that that God has for you. We hope you had as just as good of a time in service today as we did. God really showed up and showed out. If you have been blessed by today's message, don't forget to give using the giving methods that we talked about earlier in service. And also share this with your friends. We love you and we hope you have a blessed day.